Eli Manning uh, coming up at 5. Uh, Robbie Cano press conference tomorrow at 11. It'll be a, an interesting uh, Met week, I believe. Uh, Ian in Belmont. What's up, Ian? How's it going? What's happening? Um, so usually I obviously talk about the Giants on Monday, but still kind of mad about last week. So I'm going to put that aside and look forward towards the Mets. So I don't know if you saw today. I mean, this is all speculation, obviously, but there's been a lot of stuff about Bryce Harper to the Mets. I don't know if it's going to happen. It I don't second. think it's going to happen. First of all, I don't think Bryce Harper wants to play for the Mets. Secondly, uh, I don't think there's any way in – first of all, Boris has a terrible relationship with the Mets. Oh, Secondly, awesome, yeah. he has a terrible relationship. He, he, was, uh, he was adamant about the agent not getting the job. Uh, he has a terrible relationship with the Mets. He will want the highest price he can get for the player. I could keep going, uh, but uh, I, I will be the most stunned person. There's not many times I sit here and be stunned. I will be yeah. stunned if, if that happens. I would say there is, I would say little to no chance of the Mets being the top bidder for Hopper. Yeah, I guess I, I, I fully agree with Where that. Where did you too. get I, that from? So so online, there's been, these could be also rumors, but they're actually like, I don't think Rosenhaus has tweeted it, but a few guys, maybe only. Um, I'd have to yeah, go back but they, where are they getting but it from? There's no, the, there's the, the, I don't believe the Mets are even looking in that direction, and I don't even think he's looking. My understanding, well, from, what I, point, from, I what I, from a good source, what I hear is this. Harper... The Phillies are going to be the biggest bidder. That is what is believed, that they are going right. to be the highest bidder. He does not want to play for the Phillies, and Boris is trying to push him towards the Phillies. All right, That's my understanding. Okay. And, 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 but he supposedly has reservations about playing for the Phillies. Okay. I, what I read online was that he moved into some complex, and I, I, I would have to go back and look where, but there's five different Met players that currently live there. He just bought a place there. And then it was also, um, he also was, has been seen in New York a lot, but that, that can't mean too much because everyone's in New York. It's the greatest city in the world. So, but I think it's weird that he bought, I, you have to go back and reference it, but there's actual documentation that he bought an uh, apartment or condo where four or five different Met players currently live. So I thought that was a little weird correlation that crossed over. Well, I mean, I, I don't know about that. I don't know where you're alluding to. Is what you're, you know? I don't know if you're talking about somewhere in New York City uh, or Long Island. No, it's, it's not. I think I think it's Long. I would. I don't want to. Well, you know, some Mets, live, some Mets do live. City, you know, uh, 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 the Mets used to live. Some a lot of them used to live around me. Yeah, I think uh, it is around you. But I know. I mean, but I mean, now, I mean, in the old days, a lot of them did. I mean, as an example, uh, Moses Alou did when he was here. Um, Santana did. Uh, Reyes was my neighbor, um, so crazy. A, a lot of them <laughs> lived here. I mean, Reyes lived across the street for you know for a while. So uh, years ago, I used to see Jose all the time. Uh, so that's wild. Um, yeah, did you have a good that, relationship with him? I, with Jose, yes, I do. I always have, yes, okay. for a very long time. Yes, I like Jose personally. I, I always have, and very nice, very nice to the kids. Uh, very friendly. Always has a smile on his face. Loved playing here. You know, oh, yeah. I would that's say Jose's sure. career. Would have to be classified, considering his ability, as a disappointment. He, he, yeah. won, he you know, he, he had two thousand hits. He made a lot of money. He won a batting title, but he probably should have been better. Uh, if yeah. I look at it, he had a good career. I mean, listen, if you look and take a look at Jose's career, he had a really good career. He really did. But he could have had a spectacular career, and he did. Oh yeah, when he first came up, I thought yeah. he was Hall of Fame after the yeah, first he two years. Been. Yeah, yeah like, that's fair. No, yeah, that's fair. I say, you yeah, know, listen. A lot. It just shows you how hard it is, because when when you round up the guys who have come when they got here, when they got started here, Jose, Wright, uh, Mattingly, uh, Strawberry, Gooden, and realize all those guys, not one of them is in the Hall of Fame. You realize how hard it is to get in the Hall of Fame, and how you have to be lucky. To stay healthy, you have to be good. You have to be, not only you have to be dominant, you have to be dominant and consistent. You have to be both. To be in the Hall of Fame, you have to be both. In my mind, you have to be dominant and you have to be consistent. Unfortunately, we sometimes give it to the compiler. Now, the compiler has been consistent. Remember, to get in the Hall of Fame, you pretty much have to play 
somewhere close to, you know, 18, to, you know, give or take a year or two, anywhere from 15 to 20 years, anywhere right in there. 15 on the low side, 20 on the high side, right in there, right in that, right, right in that area to get into the Hall of Fame. Gary and Manalapin, what's up, Gary? Uh, great show. Thank you, uh, love it. Um, Giants fan, but I had a question for you on the yeah. Jets. Good. Do you think there's any shot that uh, the Jets are going to get rid of uh, their wonderful coach now and hire McCarthy? No. I don't, uh, before uh, the NBA? Uh, no, no they, 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 it's not done that way because McCarthy can't put a staff together, Gary. You see, the, the advantage now that the Packers have right now, now there's two reasons you get rid of a coach. One is you got to get him out of the building. He's fighting with some, like Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson had gotten to the point where he couldn't get along with the players. Um, when that happens, and maybe there's a little of that with he and Aaron Rodgers, I don't know. But what it also allows you to do is it allows the Packers to be out front about everything, talk to whoever they want, move in any way, show up at anybody's game, interview anybody they want. If they want to go visit Lincoln Riley, they go ahead. If they want to go visit an assistant coach they, with permission, they go ahead. The bottom line is they can go do what they want to do. And what it allows Mike to do is move on, field calls from people, plus it allows Mike to network and get a staff together, which is the thing. If, you, if you're sitting in Mike McCarthy's house two weeks from now, Mike will be putting together a staff. That's what he'll be doing. He'll be, now, that's if he's getting feelers. If he's not getting any feelers, he'll decide whether he wants a job or not next year. Or does he want to take a year off? If he's fielding job offers, like today, the Chargers, Wizard Hunt was leaving to go to the, uh, the Georgia Tech interview. Now, they got to start recruiting. So you would wonder if Wizard Hunt would finish the year there. I guess he would, but that would pretty put him under the gun at Georgia Tech. And if he left right away, it would really hurt him because he's a guy who's, you know, he led the Steelers as an offensive coordinator, won a Super Bowl with the Steelers and Cower. He's a very good offensive coordinator. He played tight end at, uh, and a little quarterback, but mostly tight end at, uh, at Georgia Tech. Good guy, very good guy. And uh, he'd be a good coach for, uh, he'd be a very good coach for, uh, uh, for Georgia Tech. Very good coach. They will be moving away finally from the triple option as Paul Johnson retires. Brian in uh, Carmel. Army, Navy this week. Army, I didn't know if we'd ever see this day. Army, a seven-point favorite over Navy. Boy, long time coming. Brian, uh, what's up, Brian? Mike, what's up? I'm just wondering your thoughts on an 18 playoff. I, I know there's a lot of money in the bowl games, and it's a long time coming. I'm just How do you I'm do wondering it, Brian? if... Brian, do you, uh, let me ask you this. Are you a casual college guy or a good college guy? Uh, I'm a big college guy. I don't have okay, then you know, games. Okay, then you know there's, there's very big obstacles to this. Very big. Number one, the games have to be played after Christmas, okay? So that's number one. Uh, number two, they will not disrupt the bowls. So how do you play eight games and not disrupt the bowls? I'm listening. Well, can't you make the two quarterfinal games, just two of your bigger bowl games, and go from there? How do you do that? No one will go to the games. Well, if you made like a, a Peach Bowl quarterfinal or, or a, uh, I, I don't know, an Orange Bowl quarterfinal, yeah, no one's going to go to the games? Orange Bowl's not going to agree to that. They're going to get. So here's the thing. Just financially? Here's the thing. You're going to make these people go to. Th you're going to make teams go to. Now, the one and two teams I'm gathering, uh, are you making everybody play? How Are you giving people buys? How are you setting it up? I well, know that's a you know a main question of mine too. Is like because how you, you have to, to tell become me how a 16, you're set, 17 game you schedule. See, if you're Alabama, if you're Alabama, you're not traveling to the semifinal game. You'll just travel to the final game. You, your fans won't travel to the semifinal game. Uh, some schools they'll go one week. They won't go the second week. The bowls will not move. The Rose Bowl will not move off. Will not move off. Unless they're the championship game, they will not move off. You know, unless they're in the in the mix of the final four, you know the, the, that year they will not move off anything. Will not. Their game's too big. Uh, you, it's very hard to do. 
It's, it's almost impossible because you, they have to incorporate the balls and they will not play pre-Christmas. Tom and Seafit, what's up, Tom? Hey, Mike. Uh, good afternoon. What's up? On the, uh, the the onside kick yesterday, as bad as the Beckham play, as bad as Beckham's play was, I didn't hear anything about the other three guys on that line there. That was Ellison and Penny and some of those. They didn't block anybody. That guy ran through there Listen, like a hot they, knife. They did butter. a bad job, but he's got a job to do there, and he didn't do it. I didn't say that they blocked the play well. They did not. But the front line block, second line, go get the ball. Go get the ball. If he doesn't want to do that, he doesn't want to stick his head in. Don't go. Don't play it then. It's like the guy in the giant in the Jet Tennessee game. I don't know who the return guy was for Tennessee, but what is he doing? He's fair catching balls without guys twenty without anybody within twenty yards of him. He's fair catching the balls on the twelve yard line with nobody around him. I'm like, what is he doing? Jason and Clifton, what's up, Jason? Mike, when you talk about the Giants, you always want to win. Play the quarterback gives you the best chance to win. But then when you talk about the Jets, you're like, it's not about winning meaningless games. It's about developing a quarterback. Absolutely. It, it, it isn't Except there's one different thing, Jason, point. that you're forgetting. One thing you're forgetting. Yes. When the Giants had a young quarterback and they had Kurt Warner, I said play Eli Manning. The idea is to develop your franchise quarterback. You went and got him. He's your guy. Develop him. The Giants don't have a guy on the bench who's any good. They don't have a guy there to be developed. There's nobody there Mike, who's going to be their replacement. There's no one Mike, there who's any good. Mike, here's the thing, though, Mike. This completely, totally it's a completely different fans. situation. Mike, you totally bash fans who, who are forward-looking, forward future-looking. There's probably 50-50. Those you can't. You cannot play the game. You cannot. You can't cash half a season. You don't understand. You're talking about people's lives. Mike, I understand, but you're talking about fans and what fans want. You, you. The show is about the fans. They call in. They Doesn't they matter. The fans are wrong. But, the fans have to Mike, understand. So they fans, the fans, the fans, the fans can't decide. Oh, I'm not winning the Super Bowl this year, so I don't want to win in the games. I want. To, I want the first pick. But well, it doesn't what work want. that way. It's all what we want. We want to... Hey, so, wait, no, wait a second. Who, the draft. Wait, who, do, who pulled that that's what you want? Like, you want to get to 8-8 eight and eight and probably not make the playoffs. Did you hear... Let me ask something, Jason. To, Where were you yesterday pick? during the game? Where were you yesterday? Where were you... Awful. Jason, where were you yesterday during the giant game? I was watching the game at my house. On your rear end, in your house. Did you hear the Giant fans in the stadium yelling, let's go Giants, in overtime? In the building. Who paid for a ticket? Did you hear them yelling, let's go Giants? While you sat in your house, didn't pay for a thing, turned your TV on and said, I want the Giants to tank. What about the fans who were there who were yelling, let's go Giants? which they were chanting yesterday in overtime. Back after this.